So how concerned should we be about the XBB 1.16 variant? What's up with this variant causing pink eye? And what can we do about it? That's the topic of today's video. My name is Dr. Mikhail Rashek of Mirror Genomics. Let's get started. And as a background, let me, let me let you know one of the interesting aspects of information I found out from one of the papers I studied for this video on XBB 1.16. And that's the fact that Omicron family of variants has already produced almost a thousand different lineages ever since Omicron has shown up in existence. And approximately 250 lineages that are recombinant. And this is why I wanted to bring it up to give you an idea as to what that means. What does it mean a recombinant lineage? It means it came from two different variants coming together to create a new one. They literally just split both of each other, they split and then recombine. And by the way, this is what uh, was being done with the research in Wuhan. That's exactly what they're we're doing. We know this from the NIH papers published because US was funding this research um, via NIH and they were collecting coronaviruses from bats and they were recombining them. But this is not the only way you can recombine a virus. We obviously can do it as well. We can act as factories. So we can also recombine variants. Two different variants come together if they come together. So clearly a person has to be infected with two different variants in order to create a recombined virus. And that's also not unusual. It turns out that if you sequence carefully the genetic information of SARS-CoV-2 viruses that are infecting us, typically we carry many different variants. And that also makes sense because remember, every time you duplicate genetic information, you can always randomly introduce totally new mutations. So XBB, XBB variants right now are the ones that are currently dominating the world. And it, XBB came from a recombination event. So two different variants came together and they recombined somewhere, let's say, in the midst of the spike proteins uh, receptor binding domain. And in fact, the letter X in the name designates the fact that this is actually a recombinant, um, a product of recombination of two different viruses. So that's XBB. Now let's talk about XBB 1.16. Where did it come from? It turns out that it likely came, came from India where the original XBB series probably originated as well. And what happened is in mid-February, India saw a spike on COVID cases and it was a bit mysterious as to why you suddenly have this spike of COVID cases and new genetic sequencing revealed, hey, there is a new variant in, on the block and it was uh, named at the start of March. And that finally brings me to the first paper I want to tell you about. And the authors of this publication did something really neat. What they were doing is they looked at all of the genetic information on the viruses from India that were available uh, to the public. And remember, the virus is being sequenced, its genetic sequence is being decoded all over the world, all the time. So they looked at all the sequences collected from human samples of random individuals in India since December of last year till end of April of this year. So they had approximately 3,000 different genetic sequences. So it's quite a few samples. That's amazing. So this is how we know how this virus evolves in such great detail. And approximately one, more than one third of those sequences belong to XBB 1.16 variant, which is now the dominant one in India. Uh, the other two big ones were XBB 1.5. That's the one that is now dominating North America. And the other one is, was XBB, I believe, 2.3. And the 2.3 and 1.16 are just like starting in North America. They're still uh, at low amount but increasing from week to week but they looked at how many of those sequences came from the province that specifically started this and they had about 700 sequences and the, here is the very interesting part that they did that is really quite incredible they contacted the people from whom this genetic sequence came from and they ask for permission if they can interview them about clinical symptoms and let's say about 
40% of those said yes, and they were able to actually get, not only have a genetic sequence of the, of the virus that infected the individuals, but also their, their personal experience, information on their personal experience with that variant. And about 92% of all those people, when they were infected with XBB 1.16, they ended up having symptoms. So the typical symptoms you normally see, so cough um, was very common, fever. <laughs> the one word that I, that I found was funny, rhinorrhea. So it sounds like diarrhea, but rhinorrhea and what that actually means, rhino, basically having a runny nose. So a new word I learned. And uh, that was uh, one of the symptoms as well. And yeah, like, as I mentioned, 92% of them had symptoms about about, um, I believe it was somewhere like around quarter of them had to be either hospitalized or who had to quarantine. And, um, but overall, it sounds like, like maybe bad. Oh, and 92% of all of them were also vaccinated. And it sounds maybe like it, it, it's bad. Some of them had to get oxygen, but the authors mentioned this is not any different than what you see which uh, we, they have been seeing with any other variant in India at the time as well. So that's basically what the clinical information about um, how often um, what's happening with this variant. Now that brings me to the second paper on, on, on this topic. And this one analyzed more the variant itself, what it, what it does. So these authors, for example, looked at how in, um, infectious it is and they were able to determine that it's about 1.3 times more infectious than XBB.1 and 1.2 times more infectious than XBB.1.5, the one that we have now in North America. This doesn't sound like much, but we're talking about this is, this was how much more the effective reproductive number was increased. And remember, we are already dealing with one of the, one of the most infectious viruses we know of. So these fractions of increase are actually very dramatic. So, so much so that these authors are predicting that XBB 1.16 will likely take over the world in the future. Time will tell, we'll see. So that's one of the things that, that they looked at. But they also looked, for example, mm, how the, how the, this particular variant was able to dodge antibodies from human blood after individuals were, were infected with um, either BA2 uh, or BA3 variants, I think. And, and basically, they collected the blood. The blood, obviously, from those COVID-19 survivors had antibodies against the, those particular variants. And they said that XBB1.16 was able to to dodge these antibodies, they were, it was about 20 to 40 times better at not being affected by the antibodies produced by those previous variants. So massive change still in, in the evolution of the virus to continue dodging antibodies. And they also looked at six clinically used antibodies as like a form of medication and it was able to dodge all of them but one. So clearly this is still just amazing how this virus continues to evolve, continues to change, to be still constantly more and more better at dodging our own immune system and getting more and more infectious. Uh, one, one more thing they also looked at is, I personally really enjoyed this type of information, what is referred to as dissociation constant. And that basically looks at how well the spike protein of XBB1.16 was able to interact with the ACE2 receptor. And it was a bit, little bit worse than the XBB1.5, but better than XBB1, uh, so somewhere in between. And nevertheless, the conclusion is that they expect that this virus will become the dominant one in, in the world, will take over XBB1.5, I guess. So that's the, the other information. The last information on, on, this, on this particular variant that I want to tell you is which brings me finally to the topic of the pink eye is this publication on infants in India uh, getting infected. And what the authors notice is that the infection resulted in different symptoms than were seen in previous waves in that number one, the, the children had like more of a febrile stale. The good news is that it didn't last long. It was only two to three days max, and now the kids had to be hospitalized. And but the other big one was the pink eye, and this was especially seen in infants as compared to older children. So 
seems like the infants were particularly susceptible to Penkai. And what's the reason why this is interesting is because we've seen this before with in, during COVID-19. We, we learned that um, later on, within about a year of the pandemic, that this virus can also infect eye skin. Eye, eyes can be an entry point as well, but it can also travel there, there through the ducts. We know that eyes, it was determined that the cells within eyes, they have ACE2 receptors for the virus as well. So, and this finally brings me to vitamin D. Why, why do I want to bring up vitamin D? I made a video on vitamin D before. And remember, I was mentioning that vitamin D can modulate our immune system um, to a big degree. And it turns out that vitamin D, it's really interesting as well. It, looks, it appears that um, cells in the cornea, they can metab metabolize vitamin D as well. And um, vitamin D has been shown to reduce uh, inflammation in in different variety of different inflammatory conditions of the eye as well so there is some supporting clinical information about that as well another another good one is that it, that i found very interesting good bit of information is that it it looks like many eye disorders or disease I sh disease i should say have to do with vitamin d deficiency and, and this is why vitamin D has been investigated in the past for the treatment of, of inflammation of ice. So I thought this was very appropriate time to maybe bring, bring up vitamin D once again, as we are now dealing with a new variant that is now suddenly increasing once again, presentation of pink eye as one of the symptoms of COVID-19. All right, that's all I have for you folks um, in, in this quick video. All I wanted to say, please, uh, please support and continue supporting us. I'm grateful for all your support. Uh, please pro subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Share the video. That's big. This is how we grow. Give us a like. Leave a comment. We do enjoy the comments as well. Remember, we have a COVID-19 Q&A session. The one we have coming up is on IgG4 antibodies, these mysterious antibodies that are particularly seen post-mRNA vaccination. So we have an event just dedicated to that very topic. And um, finally, please also check out my private channel, Patreon channel, where you can check out some content that does not make it on this channel. All right, see you next time, everyone. Bye.